five players left in the last couple of years. Uh, is there any way to explain that, or are they all different circumstances? All of them are different. Just because playing time. I didn't get enough shots. I didn't get enough playing time. Oh, coach, I'm unhappy. But usually there are personal things that we're not at liberty to talk about. That really leads to most players leaving programs. Coaches don't run them off. I don't think I've ever run a player off. It's just like playing time. They earn the playing time they get. When they don't get it, they don't have anyone to look at but themselves. Has this happened in the past when you were at Kentucky? Absolutely. Days? Yeah, so that's kind of the normal. Oh, yeah, well, it's, it's everywhere. More so today than ever before because kids expect their expectations as well as fans, family, friends, the pressure. Oh, I'm not reaching. Oh, I'm not. I want to be a pro. And coach is not. I'm not there yet. I thought I was going to be ready in a year. I thought I was going to be ready in two years, three years. It doesn't happen like that. You talked about working hard. You're a tough coach. At times this year, were you too tough on this team? Because no, you no, got... I was probably not tough enough. That was my biggest problem this year. Because when we had injuries, I backed off. Or well, we thought, well, OK, you know, they don't need you, coach, to be, which was exact opposite of what I should have been. I've got to be myself, and that's, and I think that, I think that sent a message, message to the players that maybe Coach Smith doesn't believe we have the ability, because now we are going to play in zone. We're not attacking. We're not pushing the ball up the court. We're not pressing. So we got away from the things we did. But I had to do it because we really didn't have the, I didn't think we had the mobility, in the in the front court with Ralph, Colton, Iverson, Trevor, and Bakwe. You know, we didn't have a pressing style def team team like we did the year before. So you did get frustrated, obviously, when the team starts off 16 and four, and then because of injuries and other things, you start losing. At one point, you called out Blake Hoff Harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, you normally don't call out players. Do you regret that? Is that? I never called out Blake Hoff Harbor. That's the same thing I would tell Blake in his face or anyone else. You know, if he's not doing the job, whether it was Trevor and Bachway, whether it was Colton Iverson, whether it's Ralph Sampson. They know what they're not doing. One of the things you get frustrated, you might say something like, I need more out of Blake Hoffarmer. You know, he made a poor decision. I mean, that's, I don't think that's calling it out. I think that's right. That's, that's, Blake know I care about him. Everybody know how hard I've worked to help Blake. And he helped our program to get to where he was, to be the leading three-point shooter in the history of gopher basketball. And I know he's grateful they've had this opportunity to play here. Unfortunately, the season didn't end the way anybody wanted it to end. Certainly, he was hurt by it more than anyone, being a senior and being the captain of the team. What I wanted was more leadership, and that's what I expect from every leader or every player on this team. The practice facility became a big issue, uh, brought up several times this year. I know you want one badly. Um, why do you need one that badly? Well, I don't want it. We need it. It's not a matter of want, it's a matter of need. We're the only school without one in the Big Ten. So my thing is that if we want to compete in the Big Ten, and we want to recruit those type of players that we have to go up against against Michigan, Michigan State, Iowa, you know, Ohio State, then we ought to be able to, we are the University of Minnesota. We are one of the top programs in America. And my vision is that we want to be as competitive as we can be, you know, just like the president wants to be a top, wants this university to be a top 20 program year in, year out academically, then I know he wants the athletic program to be a top program year in, and year out. And the only way you can do it is to, to do what's necessary, is have the resources to, uh, to compete at that level. And I think that the barn is a great place to play, but, uh, but it's not a matter of want, it's a matter of need. You're 60 years old. Uh, do you still have the, the hunger and the health and the drive it takes to compete against the Shaka Smarts and the, and the uh, guys at Butler and so forth, the younger guys coming up? Well, Jim Calhoun did. And he's established a pretty good program at Calhoun, and I think uh, Jim Beheim has, and Rick Patino. It's not a matter of age; it's a matter of mind. So, um, in a matter, of, so I'm full of energy. I feel healthy. I feel good about where we are. I'm disappointed that we didn't have a. I'm disappointed that we were 16 and four, ranked 13th in the country, had won the, the Puerto Rican shootout, and everything was going pretty smooth. And then we have a, a series of injuries, and certainly we. We pray it doesn't happen again, and we um, we hope that it, we don't have to go through that again because it's the first time that I've had to deal with it, um, having been the postseason play 17 straight years, and having won, having teams win 20 games for 17 straight years. You wonder why it have to happen then, because we had so many 
I mean, the expectation was so high, and I thought Al Nolan was playing extremely well, and things were really clicking. But I had the energy. I had the, and you can tell by the players we recruited. You can't control the fact that every time there's a head coaching job available in the United States of America, your name pops up. You can't control how you respond to it. Would it be easier for you just to say, I'm going to retire here as the head coach of the University of no, Minnesota? No, because that's, that may not be the case. Minnesota may not want Tubby Smith to retire here. So I'm not going to put myself or the university in that position. You know, I want to be here as long as we can go out here every day and work as hard as we can. And I'm not going to, uh, because I don't think any person in their right mind should do that. <laughs> Anybody that's, that's expect to be successful shouldn't put themselves in a box and say, okay, I'm going to retire here. Every place I've ever been, I expected to be there the rest of my coaching career. But fortunately or unfortunately, and you can look at it many different ways, Tulsa survived without me, and it ran prospered, you know, and, and there was a, Georgia is going to continue to grow, Kentucky's going to continue to grow, Minnesota's going to have great coaches and great players long after Tubby Smith's been here. So, you know, that's, that's the way it is. Can, can you say whether or not you've been approached or offered some of these jobs that come up? No, I don't. I never talk about jobs that, and I, and I, unless I'm, uh, that's just, just me. I don't, uh, it's, it's, it's flattering that people would mention my name. It doesn't, sometimes it doesn't help in recruiting. Uh, but then again, it, it can help. The critics come out on the internet. What, what criticism about Tubby Smith bothers you the most? That he can't coach anymore, or you're not committed, or you can't recruit? I mean, they all come out on the internet. No, Do no. They, they bother you? No, no. I never read them on the internet. I mean, I don't, as long as my boss and my wife and my family appreciate what I do, and the fans, you know, so everybody has their opinion. And so I, I mean, if you were to, if I were worried about what people said about me, I wouldn't be in coaching. I wouldn't be in coaching. And those that are in coaching, they better heed my advice. <laughs> don't worry about what they're saying about you, because you'll never, you'll never survive. You'll never prosper. Because there are going to be days you're going to be up, there are going to be days you're going to be down. You're not going to win every game. And uh, hopefully you'll lose every game. So those are things that that each, whether it's media, whether it's fans, whether it's the bloggers, whether it's in that, you know, that's that's part of it. You know, we try to counter it. Are you more convinced today than the day you walked on campus that you can lead this program to a national championship, Big Ten championship? Well, national league championship and, and Big Ten championships are pretty, they're not easy to come by. Hey, you got to measure yourself against the best. What are they doing and how do we get there? And what do we have to do to be, compete with them? And that's why I'm, I'm at, you know, that's why I'm concerned about that we continue to grow the program to compete so that we can be a team that uh, can win a Big Ten. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. I'm, uh, I'm even more convinced than ever before I got here or since I've been here that we can, that we can win and win. Big. We were very close to last year, I think, crossing that threshold. We had the setback, so that just gave me more, has given me more energy, uh, more, I guess, enthusiasm to come back and work even harder to prove that, hey, last year was just, well, was not the direction of this program.